Hello and welcome back. Now that we've reviewed blood sugar monitoring, insulin injections, and carbohydrate counting, Dr. Julie Serhai will begin with reviewing some insulin basics. People with type 1 diabetes cannot make insulin because the beta cells of the pancreas have been destroyed. Therefore, they need insulin replacement in order to allow the body to process glucose and avoid high blood sugar. Insulin must be given by injection. If taken orally, the acid in the stomach would destroy it. The insulin regimen that we use mimics the body's normal actions. I will start by explaining basal insulin, which is the background insulin. Basal insulin is also considered long-acting. Basal insulin lasts for 24 hours in the body. The types of basal insulins include Lantus, Levamir, Basaglar. Any of these brands are approved for use in our clinic. The basal insulin is given once a day. For most children, it is given at bedtime. For our very young patients, we may have them take their basal insulin every morning. It is important that basal insulin is given at the same time every day. Next, we will discuss bolus insulin, which is given at mealtimes and sometimes snacks. Bolus insulin is also known as rapid acting insulin. Bolus insulin starts working within 15 minutes and lasts for three hours in the body. Types of bolus insulin include Humalog, Novolog, Apidra, and Admalog. All of these brands are approved for use in our clinic. Bolus insulin is given at mealtimes. It's also used to correct a blood sugar that is too high. The dose needs to be calculated based on carbohydrate consumption and blood sugar. In this graph, the basal insulin in red is given at bedtime and is the background insulin. The basal is given every 24 hours. The bolus insulin is in blue and is given at mealtimes. Each time you eat carbohydrates, you will need rapid acting insulin, such as Humalog, Novolog, Apidra, or Admalog to cover the carbohydrates in your meal or snack. If snacks are kept to 15 grams of carbohydrate or less, no insulin is required unless otherwise advised. Your endocrinologist will determine how many grams of carbohydrate are covered by one unit of insulin. This is known as the insulin to carbohydrate ratio. The correction factor is used to correct high blood sugars. The correction factor is the amount that your blood sugar will decrease when you are treated with one unit of rapid acting insulin. Your endocrinologist will also determine your correction factor. Your target blood sugar is the blood sugar that we are trying to reach by giving you a correction dose of insulin. The target blood sugar number is for math purposes only. We do not expect that you or your child will have a blood sugar that exactly matches the target all of the time. For most patients, the target blood sugar is 150 milligrams per deciliter. Step one is calculating the correction dose. The correction factor is how much one unit of insulin will drop blood glucose. The target blood glucose is 150. If blood glucose is greater than 150, use the following formula to determine how much insulin is needed to decrease blood sugar to target. Actual blood glucose minus 150 divided by the correction factor equals the correction dose. If blood glucose is less than 150, a correction dose is not needed. Step two is calculating the food dose. To determine the food dose, the number of grams of carbohydrates eaten are divided by the insulin to carbohydrate ratio. This equals the units of insulin for food. Step three is determining the total amount of insulin to be given. Add the correction dose and the food dose together to determine the total amount of insulin to be given. Round to the nearest half unit. Let's go over some insulin dose calculations to practice. We realize this sounds overwhelming, but you will have lots of practice in the hospital. There are examples of insulin dose calculations in the binder. Work with the nurse and dietitian at the bedside to help determine the amount of insulin your child will need with their meals in the hospital. The target blood glucose is 150. For this example, the correction factor is 50, and the insulin to carbohydrate ratio is 1 to 15. For step one, the blood glucose is 250. We will subtract the target of 150 to get 100. So we want to bring the blood glucose down by 100. 100 is divided by the correction factor of 50. 
we will give two units for the correction dose. For step two, the meal contains 60 grams of carbohydrates. You will divide the 60 carbohydrates by the insulin to carbohydrate ratio of 15. So 60 divided by 15 equals four. Therefore, we'll give four units of insulin for food. For step three, we will add the two units of insulin for the correction, plus the four units of insulin for the meal to give a total insulin dose of six units. We encourage older children to work alongside their parents to practice insulin dosing calculations before being discharged from the hospital. This is a new experience for your family. We want to be sure that parents and older children have a good understanding of carbohydrate counting and insulin dosing. Our team is happy to be a resource to you. Thank you, Dr. Serhai, for that explanation of insulin dosing. Please remember that 150 is the target blood sugar for the math problem. We have listed some optimal blood glucose ranges based on time of day. The desired blood glucose range during the daytime, or pre-meal, is 80 to 150, before activity greater than 100, at bedtime and overnight 100 to 180. Remember, at bedtime to only correct a blood sugar above 300 with insulin and to use a target of 200. As someone who has had diabetes for 30 years, I can tell you that my blood sugars fluctuate in and out of range. Depending on what I eat, the timing of my meals and activity level, my blood sugars will vary in and out of range. Please remember that it is completely possible to have normal fluctuations in blood sugar while still achieving optimal diabetes control. Day-to-day -day fluctuations are to be expected. When we're looking at overall diabetes care, we're looking at a two week to a three month average. Please continue watching the educational videos to learn about high and low blood sugars and the recommended treatments.